Hello, Chapel. My name is Grace Marr. Of all the little blonde girls I was mistaken for in lower school, Addie Quinlan was the girl I was mistaken for the most. And what I would do to be mistaken for her now. Not only is she beautiful and poised, she is also extraordinarily smart and well-spoken. Her conversations are courageous, her faith is strong, and she's almost a better hunter than she is writer. Everyone, please get a, give it up for my amazing friend, Addie Quinlan. You might be surprised at how much a car can teach you. I certainly was. My first car was no ordinary car. It was a red-bodied, white-cabbed, 1972 Ford F-250. In other words, it was big, old, and completely awesome. It was the type of car you become known by. Obviously, the truck needed a name, and Harriet sounded fittingly old-fashioned and tough. I was ecstatic, but I had no idea what kinds of lessons were coming my way. Harriet taught me to be handy. My dad and I made countless repairs by ourselves. We re-replaced taillights, shocks, and various engine tubing, fixed the gas and temperature gauges, and used an electrolytic cell to remove rust from Harriet's hubcaps. Shout out to Dunlap. <laughs> Cars are a complex product of human ingenuity. Because Harriet was old, and therefore not computerized, I had a chance to learn about how these incredible machines functioned. But Harriet taught me much more than just mechanics. Harriet also taught me patience, timeliness, and grace under pressure. To get her to start, I went through a routine of turn the key, pump the gas, turn the key, rev the engine, and then I had to wait for Harriet's engine to warm up, or she would stall the moment I shifted gears. Once she was in drive, she accelerated slowly and often stalled after the first stop. So, even if I was in a hurry, Harriet was not. <laughs> However, this taught me to take responsibility when I made myself late, treating Harriet with care and respect instead of impulsively rushing. And whenever Harriet stalled post-stop in the middle of a busy, lightless intersection, I was forced to be flexible and level-headed to solve the crisis, enduring the terror of cars bearing down on me, impatient drivers honking at me, and a panicking little sister. <laughs> As weeks passed, I got better at being timely and at handling high-stress situations with poise. Far from confining themselves to my time with Harriet, these skills aided me in all other parts of my life. Harriet's lessons did not stop there, though. Harriet taught me to appreciate strangers. The first time I drove Harriet by myself, a cool-looking old guy tipped his cowboy hat to me. <laughs> Once, as I unlocked my parked truck, a young woman ran over and told me how impressed and inspired she was that a teenage girl was driving such a big, old-fashioned truck. It amazed me that I could encourage other women to be confident simply by driving Harriet. On the note of gender, as a female, being approached by a strange man can be frightening. However, strange men approached me countless times to kindly point out a leak under Harriet, proving my apprehension unfounded and reminding me that while caution is wise, I should not prejudge people. I laughed when fellow drivers, catching sight of the young blonde girl driving the 40-year-old pickup truck, stared at me like I had grown antlers or when they randomly honked at me in the middle of a traffic jam. Harriet initiated many other memorable encounters with strangers and taught me many other things, but her concluding lesson was by far the hardest to learn. Harriet taught me to let go. I was driving our own Alina Perez and Harriet one dark and rainy rush hour, and we took a shortcut through the busy, lightless intersection at Shady Grove and Perkins Extended. We were T-boned in the driver's door by a car going at least 30 miles per hour, and although Harriet's Detroit iron frame was unbent, the insurance company totaled her. Harriet had no airbags, but aside from a bump on my head, Alina and I were unscathed. I felt terribly guilty 
and I was heartbroken at the thought of parting ways with the truck that taught me so much and then gave up her life to protect mine. I would miss Harriet's foot-shaped gas pedal, giant steering wheel, lockable gas tank, deafening engine, and many other quirks. But as amazing as Harriet was, I had to let go and move on. Harriet's short time in my life does not decrease her importance in it. I would not be the person I am today without that truck. So I suppose Harriet taught me one final lesson. Do not take any part of your life, be it person or thing, for granted. It may be inconvenient, old, inconsistent, and temperamental, but it might also be a cool, unique, and beautiful teacher. Thank you.